So in this video, I want to very briefly, uh, hopefully I manage with a briefly part, uh, explain a very effective approach, a very effective approach to planning, to writing, to generally doing your dissertation, whether it's a PhD thesis, a master's dissertation, or maybe you're writing a paper, regardless of which one you are, uh, this is a, a very powerful, very effective approach to organizing your work. And uh, if implemented correctly, you'll feel that you're constantly on top of things. It, it makes it easier to control the whole process. It's really going to be difficult to do something wrong or to mess things up. This is why this approach is so powerful. It gives you full control of the process. And uh, this approach uh, involves is a, is a top-down approach to planning, top-down approach. So it's a, it goes from general to specific and uh, it refers to two aspects of writing or planning your dissertation. So it refers to uh, planning uh, the product, uh, which is the actual dissertation or the, the actual document, and planning the process, which is of course the whole process, the whole procedure, the time frame between now and your submission. So let's start with planning the product. So again, planning the product, which is the actual document, the actual dissertation. Uh, basically, so uh, the top-down approach here, uh, the bottom-up approach would be the opposite. And the bottom-up approach, which is probably not something uh, that you want to do, uh, would involve just starting with a blank, Microsoft Word document basically. So as you can imagine, it's highly demotivating to, to be just staring at the screen and, and imagining that you have to, uh, this will have to become somehow a 15,000 or 30,000 or 80,000 Word document. This would be a bottom-up approach going from this small, from the specific to general. The opposite, which is the approach I want to discuss, is a top-down approach. So basically, uh, to avoid that situation that I mentioned, you want to start with having some structure, some, some general core or backbone of your dissertation even before you can actually write it or you can actually populate the different sections and the different chapters. So what I mean specifically, uh, you may remember from my other video when I talked about writing the literature review and it was kind of similar. So it was basically populating uh, the different little sections. So starting with the headings, even if they are empty and then gradually adding and adding materials to it. So it's, it's the same approach, uh, except that this time it refers to the whole dissertation. So you want to start with some general structure. Ideally, the way I like to do it is to have uh, separate documents, separate Word documents for separate chapters. You can also, I guess it will depend on your preferences, you can uh, have one document and just have different headings for for each uh, different uh, chapter. That's that's possible as well. But the whole point is that you want to start with that with that structure. So not just to to write to start writing from scratch and have nothing, but rather to to start introducing the different headings, different sections. So the introduction, the literature review, then the methodology and results and so on and so forth. And then after this, you want to go from general, so from these general headings to the specific. So as you, as you start to develop an idea of what to put there, of course, you want to start going, uh, being more and more specific. So start introducing the different sections. Once, uh, once you're doing, for example, the reading for your literature review, it will uh, become increasingly clear to you what kind of headings, what kind of subheadings and subsections you want to introduce. So, so again, start adding these section uh, numbers and section names under the general literature review heading. Same with, uh, will refer of course to any other chapter. So for your methodology, you may start with adding headings such as uh, research questions or philosophical assumptions, data collection methods, uh, sampling methods. So anything that comes to your mind, anything that you know will have to be there in that final structure. Even if you don't have, at the time of writing this, you don't have anything to put in these different sections. And this is good for so many reasons, th this approach. So basically, apart from this whole mental or psychological aspect that I mentioned, so j just the feeling of actually having something, actually doing something rather than starting with a blank document, uh, this gives you a structure, gives you a nice idea of what goes where, a nice idea of where you are, what else uh, there is left to do. So, so this is another quite obvious, in my opinion, uh, advantage. The less obvious ones are, for example, that as you work on, on a given section or chapter and you come across something uh, relevant, but not for this section. So let's say you're reading the literature for the literature review, you're gradually adding some, some notes to your, your chapter on the literature review, but you come across a very 
a good description of methods for the methodology chapter. So what I normally do in that situation is I copy this description uh, and paste it into my currently empty methodology chapter under under a corresponding heading. So for example, if there is a description of methods, of course, I'll, I'll put it in my uh, data collection methods section. So I, either this description or some kind of a note where to find that description, but basically some indication that this is how perhaps something to consider or what I want to write. So what's happening is that you're gradually populating these initially empty sections, uh, even if it's not your, your writing, your final writing, uh, these are some kind of notes, some kind of materials. You're putting stuff there to make it easier for yourself later. Sometimes if uh, the word count, the word limit is a problem, I also like to indicate how many words for each chapter. So again, if, if I have 5,000 words for my literature review and then 5,000 for my methodology, I will write that, indicate that next to my chapter, uh, chapter title. And then as I go into more specific sections, again, I'll break that number down. So let's say again, to use simple maths, because I don't, I don't like counting. Uh, if I have 5,000 words for my liter literature review, then I have five different, uh, five different sections underneath. I'll break it down into 1,000 each. So, so that again, it makes for the same reasons. It, it's just easier psychologically, gives you a sense of making progress and also easier just for organizing your work. So all these uh, things, all these procedures that I described generally uh, are included in this top-down approach as, uh, and as it's probably easy to imagine now, this approach is so good because, specifically because you're just making things easier for yourself later. So you're populating, you're adding stuff to uh, the sections that you haven't even started writing yet. Uh, you're planning, you, you can clearly see the structure, you know exactly where you are, what else there is left to write or how many words there are to write. So generally helps you uh, stay on top of things. And now uh, regarding planning the process. So again, top-down approach to planning the process. I also mentioned that in my other videos, uh, but generally it's the same thing. It's starting from something that, uh, from the point where you are not uh, at the moment and planning backwards. That's also how I how I call this in one of my older videos, planning backwards. So basically this means, let's, let's use a simple example of a dissertation for which you have three months. So let's say it's May and you have to submit on uh, August 15th. So the way you want to plan, plan the whole process is again, you start at the very end. So your submission date is August 15th. So that's, that's the starting point for you if you're planning backwards, of course. So uh, you're thinking, what do, you, what do I need to do prior to submitting my, my work? So I definitely need a couple of days, so just to make sure everything is there and maybe, you know, make sure I submit actually before the date, if there are problems with the internet. So let's say the 10th will be my final date. By that time, I need to have my, my thesis proofread. So obviously proofreading, editing is something that you want to do. So. Uh, so then I'm planning how, how long this will take. So this will take, let's say, a week. I need to contact the proofreader a week before. So, so I'm constantly moving backwards. So uh, generally, the approach to this is also to start with larger chunks, so to speak, just like you started with your, your literature review and uh, your chapters, and then you moved on uh, to individual sections. Again, here I like to start with larger chunks. So, you know, in that time period, I want to finish, you know, writing this section, uh, this chapter, for example, and then by by August first, I need to definitely be done with all my discussion and and my results. This means that by the twentieth, I have to be done with my data analysis, which means that I need to collect my data between, let's say, June fifteenth and uh, July tenth. So I'm constantly moving backwards until I I obviously come to this. Uh, here and now. So, so as you can see, it's a very similar approach. Also, I, I start with these larger chunks and then start uh, going to more specific uh, bits. So basically, I like to, when I'm done with this whole process, so I know more or less when, when I need to work on my literature review, when I need to collect my data, when I need to analyze my data, uh, then I like to plan at least this, this coming month. So I'll take this one month and I'll break it down into into smaller sections, smaller bits, and then probably I'll do the same with the current week. So I want to know what exactly I need to do this week. And uh, as, as you can imagine, probably this coupled with the previous, previous approach, so planning the product, can be an extremely effective, extremely powerful technique because now I know exactly where I am, I know exactly how many words I need to write, I know exactly what 
section includes what kind of information and now I also know exactly when I need to be finished with individual sections individual chapters so as I said before this whole uh, this whole process really if implemented correctly really gives you this sense of uh, almost empowerment of being on top of being self-confident of knowing where you are where you're going so uh, constantly controlling the whole whole uh, progress and the whole process so it's just very difficult to make a major mistake if you if you implement this technique so that's all I wanted to share uh, this approach really helped me with my masters and my PhD I hope it will help you I hope that uh, this is something new that you learned something new today if you did please like this video help others find it if you have any questions, put them in the comments. And if you require a more detailed personal assistance, feel free to reach out about uh, private tutorials.